click the bell icon to get latest videos from ikeda hello friends now this is a concept called as gantt chart that is a part of cpm and pert and it is used to represent a project with the activities and the duration on a horizontal timeline so gantt chart is basically a simple version of showing the different activities that are carried out in a project in a horizontal timeline let's see how that is done and you'll we'll solve a problem based on gantt chart to understand this whole concept so gantt chart can be explained or defined as a graphical presentation of different activities in a project in a particular series or a sequence as defined in the question and they are drawn to the time scale this is the main difference between a network diagram and a gantt chart second by drawing a gantt chart we make the things more simplified and therefore how the activities shall be performed which activities in a project can be carried out simultaneously all can be easily understood and interpreted by even a layman like a worker or a foreman or a supervisor this is the basic difference that makes this very popular among some of the plant managers let's see how we will solve a problem before solving the problem let me explain how the things will be shown on the gantt chart now imagine my project is for 10 days and we start at the zero day and it gets completed on the 10th day so 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 let's say 6 days are there for my project not 10 days now how do we show the activities here Uh, this is the first part of the gantt chart that is we make a timeline this is a timeline this 0 1 2 and 3 indicates the days or the hours or the time of the project now say activity a is the first activity for 2 days so my first activity is activity a 0 se 2 din lag jata hai isko ye pehla din aur ye dusra din so ye mera activity a then i can start activity b and c after completion of a now let us say activity b takes another 2 days that is the third day and the fourth day activity b and activity c takes 3 days second third and fourth day and at last we have activity d now here what i have done is i have shown the overall sequence of the activities and the duration of the time they will take and how the activities flow in the project is clearly indicated in this diagram and this is nothing but called as the gantt chart so my project is for 6 days pehla do din a chalega first and second day a will take 2 days then after that b will continue for another 2 days third and fourth day at the same time i will have c which will continue for 3 days third fourth and fifth day and then we have activity d which will continue for another one day it is the last day of the project this way i can easily indicate the flow of the activities the duration of the activities the sequence in which they will be conducted and maybe also i can easily estimate the cost or the expenditure on each day for the activity thereby i don't end up paying more for than what is expected and that way i am able to optimize the solution secondly this is something that can be very easily understood by a layman or by common man who may have nothing to do with something called as cpm and pert thirdly this helps in careful analysis 
and allocation of the resources. As a project manager, you will know very well that on what day, what material will be required at which of the particular site where the activities are required to be carried. And this is where the Gantt chart is very useful. Now what can be the probable disadvantages or the backdrops of this Gantt chart? One of the possible drawback or limitation of Gantt chart is that it does not show the interrelationship between the activities separately. Means I can't really pick out from the diagram that which activities are linked to whom. At the most I can say B and C will be carried out simultaneously. But B will start after which activity that may not be very clear from the table. Second, one cannot ascertain the progress of the activities by looking at the Gantt chart. Gantt chart is something that may be very useful before actually starting the operations. But once the operations are implemented, then an organization or a firm may not be able to utilize the Gantt chart to a great extent. And therefore, it suffers from this limitations. Let's solve a problem based on this whole concept to get the feeling or the understanding of how to draw a Gantt chart. This was just an example where I take an imaginary example with activities A, B, C and D. Now we'll solve the actual problem based on this whole concept. So this is my example where I have got activities A to F and we have got the preceding activities and the durations and they have asked us two questions. What is the duration of the project and what is the and draw the grant chart for indicating the schedule of the project. First we will draw the diagram and find out the duration of the project and then we will actually work on drawing the Gantt chart. A and B are the initial activities so A and B ke pehle koi nahi aega. So here aapka activity A or activity B and then after A we have C after B we have D and we, and we don't need to join C, C and D anywhere so A ke baad C B ke baad D and then we have A and B are required to be combined to get E अब देखिए सिर्फ ए के बाद सी चाहिए सिर्फ बी के बाद डी चाहिए और मुझे ए और बी कंबाइन भी करना है तो कंबाइन आप डायरेक्ट नहीं कर सकते इफ आई ज्वाइन दिस डायरेक्टली विद ए और फ्रॉम ए आई डायरेक्टली ज्वाइन विद बी देन ए एंड बी विल गेट कनेक्टेड एंड इट विल इंडिकेट दैट डी कैन स्टार्ट ओनली आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ ए एंड बी या वो ये भी इंडिकेट कर सकता है कि सी कैन स्टार्ट आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ ए एंड बी जो कि कहीं भी प्रॉब्लम है बोला नहीं है ऐसा सी कैन स्टार्ट ओनली आफ्टर ए डी कैन स्टार्ट ओनली आफ्टर बी दैट फोर इफ आई वांट टू जॉइन ए एंड बी बोथ साइमल्टेनियसली आई नीड टू गेट टू डमीज हु विल जॉइन देम एग्जैक्टली इन द मिडल इज माई टू डमीज एंड दे आर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड जस्ट टू एड ई and at last we will have something called as f after e but then drawing it in this manner i won't be able to join c and d and f because c d and f all three are my final activities therefore i need to redraw the diagram again as we had discussed earlier this is a purely trial and error method आपसे मिस्टेक्स होगा लेकिन आपको सॉल्व करना है और पेंसिल से शुरू करना है वंस यू गेट द फेयर फिगर यू गेट एन आइडिया दिस इज वी आर सपोज टू ड्रॉ इन द एग्जाम रीड ऑफ दिस अगेन यू आई कान ड्रॉन डायरेक्टली दिस वे सी एंड डी सो मैं इसको फिर से थोड़ा ड्रॉ करता हूँ दिस इज माई ए दिस इज माई बी एंड then i will have something called as c 
and then you'll have something called as D. I will join A and B in the dummy manner. And through these two dummies, I will add E and F. And then we have something called as F. So finally, we have a diagram where we have A and B as the initial activities. Here we get through dummy liya, dummy se E liya, E ke baad F a gaya, A ke baad C or B ke baad D. So we have A, B, C, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. So we got the six activities. I put the duration against them. For A it is 2. For B it is 3. For C it is 1. For D it is 2. For E it is 3. And for F it is again 2. So you got the numbers which are my alternate routes. Let's see. My alternate routes will be 1. We'll just put the numbers here first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So my alternate routes will be 1, 2, 6. You will take 2 plus 1. Then we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 will give you 2 plus 3, 5 plus 2. One was dummy. Next is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. For 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, it will be 3 plus 3, 6 plus 2, 8. And last we have 1, 3, 6, which have a duration of 3 plus 2, 5. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 6, 1, 3, 6, and 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the different routes. In my sense, the most duration is 8. Ka. So this becomes your critical path. And for this critical path, we need to draw the GAN chart for 8 days. Let's draw the GAN chart now on the next page. We have 8 days, so I will make 8. Now this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Because our project is for 8 days, we are making this for 8 days. If you follow the original question, my initial activities were A and B. Diagram will be dikhra aapko A and B are the initial activities. A ko lagta hai 2 din, B ko lagta hai 3 din. So, A ka 2 din le le de For B we have 2 A ho gaya. For 2 days. Then we will draw also B at the start with 3 days. After A and B, we can draw C for one day, E for three days, and D for two days. A or B pura mera yahan pe hota hai. Uske baad shuru hoga mera E for three days. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now this will be my activity E. For three days. 
तब तक हमारे प्रोजेक्ट में हमने डे वन पे शुरू किया था ए और बी एक चला गया दो दिन बी को लग गया और एक दिन तीन दिन फिर ए और बी दोनों खत्म हुआ हमने शुरू किया ई अनादर थ्री डेज इफ यू लुक एट द डायग्राम अगेन सिर्फ ए के बाद आई कूड स्टार्टेड विथ सी फॉर वन डे सिर्फ बी के बाद आई कूड स्टार्ट विथ डी फॉर टू डेज वो भी कर लेते हैं ए के बाद एक दिन के लिए सी चालू करते हैं बी के बाद डी दो दिन के लिए चालू करते हैं एक के बाद एक दिन के लिए सो आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ ए फॉर वन डे वी हैव सी एंड देन वी हैव डी आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ बी फॉर अनदर टू डेज तो हमारा बी यहां पे खत्म होता है सो बी के खत्म होने के बाद दो दिन तक चलेगा तुम्हारा डी इसलिए मैं डी फॉर टू डेज तो आई स्टार्ट विथ ए ए हमारा दो दिन गया हमने ए के साथ बी भी शुरू किया बी तीन दिन चला गया ए जैसे ही खत्म हुआ हमने फिर सी शुरू किया एक दिन के लिए बी खत्म होने के बाद हमने शुरू किया डी दो दिन के लिए तो अब मेरा ए बी सी डी हो गया और ई e, बी हो गया बच्चा सिर्फ एफ ना एफ कैन स्टार्ट अप टू कम्पलीशन ऑफ ई एफ ई के बाद शुरू होता है तो एफ जाएगा टू डेज so my final activity will be f for two days so do din a gaya teen din b gaya usi darmiyan c bhi ho gaya ek din mein pura at this point i am done with a b and c then i started with d for three days and then i started with F after completion of E for two days. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F. All the activities in the project, and we are done with proper scale. This is called as Gantt chart uh, with an example. It's a purely imaginary example. You can get a problem based on calculation of Gantt chart in the exam, where you need to draw this diagram on a very easy and simple and small topic, and therefore this is very important from exam point of view. So this is how we make a Gantt chart, and this basically indicates the overall project duration and how the flow will continue. Then it might be also useful for calculating the cost of the resources. so gantt chart can be used for calculating the resource cost how much cost can be incurred on a particular day like if i want to know how much i am going to incur on day 5 so this is my day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 5 pe mera kaun sa kaun sa activity chalne wala hai mujhe activity chalega d or e do activities chalega so i can easily find out how much cost i am going to incur and it's it's very easy in terms of layman means even a common person can easily use something like a gantt chart and understand it by just looking or observing it very carefully you need not observe very minutely and that's why this is very vital for this whole calculations that you need to analyze and smoothen out all the resources I hope guys you got what is a Gantt chart. There are very limited problems based on Gantt chart under the old study materials as well as the new study materials. But then now they might be very important from exam point of view, and there's a good number of chances that you might get something based on PERT, uh, which has been put down under the syllabus in a very small scale. Thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe to our channel, Ikira.